Hello everyone. So I um, wanted to share with you my admiration for the products of a company called Adrian Swalls, uh, who principally make uh, wargaming terrain. Uh, this catalogue is quite an old one. They've been around a few years now. This catalogue's dated uh, January 2014. Um, and they can be found... The website is www.adrianswalls.com. Um, not sure what that is. Is that Facebook info at adrianswalls.co.uk? Or is that just the... Um, that's just an internet address, I think, isn't it? But you can probably find that on their website. I recommend going to their websites. It's quite... Uh, it's very well constructed, quite atmospheric, nice sort of sounds and music on it as well. Um, start, I'm going to start with the mosque that I purchased only yesterday at Salute and just I've just brought home. Um, giving you a bit of a distance shot, I'm going to give you some close-ups in a moment. Uh, this is a 28mm mosque uh, for the colonial through to the modern era. I don't see any reason not to use this for earlier periods as well. I can't see anything on it that is um, noticeably of modern manufacture. Um, it comes in various pieces, uh, a front wall, the buildings are joined together, the roofs are detachable and there's a minaret, a splendid minaret goes way up into the sky um, with a sort of brass metal uh, roof to it, parapet there for the uh, Muslim to call people to prayer and uh, really nice as are all their products. They come pre-painted I should say straight away to a very high standard and um, the, the all the work and effort is put into the exteriors Although the roofs are detachable, you, there is no in, internal detail as such. It's just to allow you to put figures inside the buildings when you're playing. Um, having said that, um, he, the, he goes to great lengths to ensure that any interiors that you can see do have detail in them. So what I'm going to do is but I'm going to take the camera off its stand and show you all that in a, in a bit more close-up. Okay, let's just give you a closer look at the, uh, the texturing and the brickwork and so on. And um, I really like those doors and windows, the kind of grilling on them. It's not only painted well, but it's a really kind of elaborate uh, crisscross kind of pattern on them. And uh, the dome of the mosque itself is really nicely done. Going up the minaret, the parapet of the minaret. And as I say, the, uh, the sort of metal work on the, the roof of the minaret. Now, um, as I said, all the roofs are detached. Well, a lot in a lot of the buildings, the roofs are detachable to allow you to put the build, they put figures inside the building, but very plain inside. Um, all the effort gone into uh, the outside. But whenever you have the opportunity to look through an opening, you can see the interior of that building has really been worked on. It's really nice, kind of red brick floor or tall tiling floor. It looks more like brick to me. This roof comes off. And get it off with one hand. Ah, should have rehearsed this. I can't. I'm not sure I can do this with one. I need both hands to do that. There we go. And look at that. Um, this is the area that uh, 
worshippers would uh, go to first of all. So this is where they would uh, wash their feet and hands and so on. So there's a lovely kind of basin there. Um, they'd sort of sit around the edge of that and wash their feet before they go in through that door there to prayer. And um, all of that is kind of hidden when you've got the roof on. But uh, because it is possible at kind of eye level uh, or tabletop level to uh, see into that, he's made sure all the all the detail is there. So uh, they're expensive these models. This one is actually ninety pounds, which is a lot of money. But nothing to do in the way of work on it. No painting or anything. I mean, if you wanted to, you could uh, you could do some work on the interior. <coughs> I've seen a photograph of someone's, um, they've got his Anglo-Saxon church and they've actually gone to the bother of painting the walls of the church on the inside and so on with um, religious paintings and not, not just plain colours. Um, you could have figures on top on this roof here. Uh, it's, I think it's just absolutely lovely. And uh, as I say, I don't see any reason why you couldn't use that uh, for... Uh, uh, for the Crusades periods, for somewhere like uh, Damascus, or or even even other other places in in the Holy Land, absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely. I'm going. I'm going to. Um, I've got in mind various uh, roles for it, but I was also thinking Indian Mutiny. Um, it would do very nicely for an Indian Mutiny. Building the um, the minaret itself is removable. You just put it up against the side wherever you want it. So you could take that off and have that as a kind of a building without the minaret if you so desired. Really fantastic. Anyway, on to the next one. So what you're looking at now are three Viking longboats. These are the first products that uh, I purchased from him. Uh, you can buy um, a variant. The, the sails, uh, the first ship he produced, they had red sails, um, and the second variant just has green sails. Um, the actual ship itself is identical, so it's only the colour of the sail that's different, and um, the prows. I say prowls because um, each ship has three variants of a prow that you can use. Um, so this particular ship, the prows are all in a sort of natural wood colour, but you can either have a kind of dragon's head or... And these all come, so you can just take them off and change them. You don't have to choose. Or there's this sort of beaked, toothy kind of creature. Looks like it might have feathers as well as beak and teeth. Uh, these remind me a lot of the um, prowl that uh, is in the British Museum that uh, Darkling uh, Eldridge showed on his video channel recently. And there's another kind of worm-like, serpent-like creature with bug eyes. So these wooden, nat wooden natural prowls all come with the green sailed uh, vessel, but you can get them in kind of painted form. Might be a little bit garish, I don't know. Um, that's the bug-eyed monster. Uh, this is the sort of beaked, feathered creature. Is it we've got the dragon here painted more simply but uh, with sort of red tongues and eyes really nice I think they're, I think they're lovely absolutely lovely um, and the oars I've only put the oars in the center one because I've, I've left them I haven't glued them in place or anything because I find I've I realized before I was to glue them that um, that takes up rather a lot of room because they're quite tall and that makes them wide as well. Makes it difficult to store them. So I've left the oars um, so you just take them in or out. And uh, I suppose you could you could have them shipped. 
you could have them sort of more internally. And um, they're made of metal rather than resin, the ores. Um, might be a bit of paint. That's the danger, I suppose, of running them in and out through those holes. There might be a bit of paint coming off there. But uh, they're nice and um, robust. And uh, again, I'll give you a little bit of a closer look at those. So when you put them together, you have to... Um, it comes with a sort of string, but it's not string. It's been treated to look uh, like rope. It's a really nice effect and uh, gives you instructions on how to glue it in place. I found drilling holes here was easier than trying to stick that underneath. Um, I don't know why they don't recommend drilling hold unless it's for health and safety that they don't like you drilling into resin but um, much easier don't don't uh, don't risk maybe use a mask or something don't want to get so you do anything dangerous but it's much easier to drill and then the ropes just wrap around the top of the mast and then uh, wrap around those sort of uh, beams at the back and you have to stick the steering board on as well but um, I think they're just so good. I, I'm in awe of uh, a lot of uh, Adrian's Walls products. I think they're just so nice. So the dragon's head prow. And then you've got this sort of furry monster, fl uh, feathery monster rather. flat bottomed so they don't rock and on to the next product right next up there are four dark age huts um, I've actually got lots of these um, I bought quite a few when I was putting on a saga tournament a couple of years ago in Plymouth but um, so I've got far more than uh, I'm going to show you, but they're all one or other of these four types. So this one at the front is the smallest one. This is the peasant hut. Um, doesn't have a detachable roof. Uh, but a nice little uh, model in its own right. Um, you can get, I haven't got any, but you can buy wattle fences and so on to make quite a nice little village complex. Um, the one at the back is fairly plain, it's just a larger hut described as a warrior's hut. That does have a detachable roof, but as with the mosque, um, not much to see inside. It's simply to allow you to put figures inside if you're playing a game. Um, again, I'll give you a bit of a closer look at all these in a moment. Um, this one here is, I think it's called a blacksmith's or a forge. Um, again, a detachable roof. Nice little extra details in the front, such as an anvil, a, um, a brazier with hot coals in, and a little trough of water to quench metal in, hot metal in, and uh, some must be some fuel or something like that. Chop logs in front, and then over the other side, this one's called the pottery, which has got a lot of uh, clay pottery vessels on shelves at the front of it. Um, again, with a detachable roof. So again, I'll just get a little bit closer to those, so you can see those. So this is the blacksmiths. Warrior's hut at the back. The pottery. And the more simple peasant's hut. So this is the last of my um, collection of models that I got from Adrian's Walls. Um, the four models at the front are come in a group, um, and if I remember rightly, they're called the Crusaders Camp. So I think he brought these out uh, about the time that Crescent and Cross was released. Um, but really, they, they're just... Uh, uh, makeshift encampments. So you, I've used these for, especially the ones at the back, for Congo um, in a hot climate. 
if you're on the march, just put up some timber, put some canvas or tarpauling over it, and away you go. Um, all of them, the roofs come off. Um, nothing really other than ground underneath, but you could put in various items in there to make it more um, realistic. I like them for their kind of uh, rudimentary nature. It's just given them a little bit of colour, um, sort of dull greens and ochres and sort of off blue kind of colour. But other than that, uh, they really look like they're you know, the army on the march throwing up a sort of temporary bivouac. And at the back, um, I think that's called Saracen's Camp or Saladin's Camp. Um, really nice uh, item to add to your uh, Middle Eastern armies. I, I have often, I've never got around to painting them, but I've got a lot of uh, mobile figures in for India. And this would almost do for um, a camp for the mobile period as well. Um, perhaps they would have had uh, richer kind of awnings on the materials to make the tent out of. But the, the shape and its design is very similar to what the moguls would have used for their armies. Um, right, so again, I'm going to give you a little bit more of a close-up. So I might have a similar problem in a minute doing all this with one hand and holding the other one. But um, these are the, the uh, Crusaders camp items at the front and then I really wanted to give you a close up of this uh, Saladin's camp at the back here um, this comes in a few parts uh, but look how because you can see into the interior he's actually carpeted the area giving it some nice detail um, put some sort of rugs down and I really like just little things like the uh, the awnings and the rope work. But um, this one, oh, and it's a really nice kind of crescent finial on the top here, or half moon or whatever it is. Rising moon, is it new moon? Um, the roof of this comes off, and this is where I might have a problem. No, there we go. There's the sort of interior area where you could place a seated warlord or something like that um, but then the rooms to either side are obviously the kind of private rooms and you can't get into those either this part this roof doesn't lift off or that one but everything you can see from the outside is taking care to make sure there's detail there and it looks realistic and uh, I would. I just. I was just making the video to uh, to shout the uh, give a bit of a shout out for the for the company. Really, he, he does a lot more. Go to his website and see what he does. Um, but all his uh, products are, are superb. I think uh, I'm probably going. I couldn't afford to buy both at the time, but I'm probably the next one I buy will be a new, newish building he's brought out called the Governor's Residence. That's going to be very useful for colonial warfare, particularly the Indian Mutiny. Um, and there we are. Check out the website, Adrian's Walls. Thanks for watching. See you on the next video.